One of the main kinds of light used every day in film, photography and CG animation is the softbox and RenderMan has a powerful and realistic version of this light which can not only replicate these lights very accurately but also has a number of non-real world features to help you control and direct the light in many ways that would be very tricky in the real world. When we use the term softbox we're referring to the frame that normally sits around a light bulb which in turn modifies and confines the emission to give that light a soft quality. Softboxes are normally used for fill and key lights and many times a diffuser or egg crate is used in front of the bulb to diffuse that light even further. And so the main light in RenderMan for creating this style of light is the rec light, which is essentially a big rectangle that casts light in one direction. And we can also push the realism of the quality of light and its reflections by applying a texture to that rec light. So let's have a look at how the rec light works in Solaris. Okay, here we are in Solaris with our familiar Reflectotron robot scene and we're going to drop in a light. And so the way we do that is we type tab and then we type in light. And we know by now that we actually want to connect this light into our merge node, which adds it into our scene graph. And by default, Solaris always wants to make this point light its default light when you drop any light in. And for this example, what we want to do is we want to create a rec light. And so in Solaris, it's actually called rectangle. But in other DCCs, this, this is called a Pixar Rec Light. And so let's select Rectangle. And then let's move this light away from our robot. And it's going to move it up a little bit. And so you can see here that as I described in the introduction, we have this big rectangle or square, which is emitting light in one direction. So it's blasting right towards our robot. And so one of the first things that I like to do when working with Rec Lights is create a pivot or look at point for this light. And we can do that in Solaris, as we can see here under our light tool tips, is we press Shift and T. And when I do that, it creates a pivot point and actually it creates it at the center of the scene. And if I press M, I can then change which way the manipulators work from local to world. And I want to create a pivot point, which is right on the top of his head. And so now what I can do is I can start to pivot and rotate this light around this pivot point so if i want to create a rim light i can move it around the back here and if i want to create a key light i could move it to one of his sides for instance like here and so in this example i'm just going to put it behind him because i actually want to see this light and the texture that we're going to apply to it so let's have a look at some of these parameters so here we have our familiar intensity and exposure and let's just increase them up here we have our color here we have our color temperature. So again, we've learned this in a number of other lessons where we can set it to a color temperature if we want to match real world lights. And this is going to come in quite handy in a minute when we actually plug in a texture. So let's put this back to its default of 6500. And so here we've got width and height. And in the real world, most of these soft boxes or rec lights actually come in one or two main shapes. They either come in square and some of them are sort of half a meter. So 0 0.5 by 0 0.5. But there are also other kind of soft boxes that you can get in the real world, which are more portrait shaped. So I've set here the width to one and the height to two. But just for this example, we're going to keep it square. And so here again, underneath, you can see that we can control our normalized power and we can also control our diffuse and specular responses that this light will emit. Again, so I can turn this down so this light is only emitting specular. And again, if I invert those, you can now see that we're only emitting diffuse. Now, one of the unique features about a rec light is that it has a texture input. And if we just have a look at a couple of others, if we have a look at cylinder, you can see that we don't have that. If we have a look at sphere, we don't have a texture input. And if we have a look at disc light as well, we don't have a texture input. Now, the thing about a disc light is basically the same as a rec light. It's just a disc shape and you can't actually apply a texture to it. OK, so now this is really where the power is. So you can see here that at the minute we have a big white square and this is effectively the texture or the color of our light. And this is where the power of being able to map a texture to this light really comes in. And so let me just demonstrate this. You can see here that in the reflections, if I just you can see if I just move him around a bit and try and get his reflections a bit more obvious, 
So on the side of our robot here, you can see that we have a very solid reflection and the quantity of light that's being emitted is, is also very solid. And to mimic these kind of studio lights in the real world, we don't really have this big solidness to lights. So if you really want to push your realism, the way to do that is to apply a texture to your lights. And again, I'm just going to move this around a bit so when we apply our light texture, we can see it a bit more clearly. And so to apply a texture to our light, what we want to do is we want to come over to this icon here, which will bring up a file browser. So here's a bunch of different HDRIs that have been kindly supplied to us by Cave Academy. Now, unfortunately, when you download this lesson, you won't actually get these in your download. So what I would suggest is going over to the Cave Academy website and from there you can purchase a number of different HDRI lighting packs. So let's have a look at this diffuser. And another gotcha is always make sure that in this show files matching you've put star because by default you won't see the .tex and I've already converted it so we can load it straight in. And so you can see here that now what we've done is we've replaced this solid color with this texture of the actual softbox. And this is created by taking photographs of a real light at various different stops. If I turn this light down a bit more, you, we can see the creases in the actual fabric on the front of the softbox. And now if I just increase this light a bit brighter, we can also see, let me just take it down a little bit more. You can see here that we now start to see the variation and the quantity of the light that's being emitted from our texture. So in the center here where the bulb would actually be, it's brighter. And as the fall off from the bulb and the texture of the fabric that's on the front of our softbox, we can now start to see we get a bit of vignetting and we get a bit of difference in the color. And this is really important. So if I bring this light back around so we can have a look a bit more at the reflections, you can see that now we start to get these really lovely graduated reflections and if you're doing you know portraits and automotive rendering and product renderings it's really important to be able to texture your lights to get that extra realism in the reflections and the quantity and the quality of your light so let's have a look at another one here so this is one here that actually has the diffuser canvas on this one here does not have that so let's have a look at this and again if i move it around to the back you can see that this is how, I'll just drop the intensity down. This is how the softbox actually looks without the fabric. And so the lovely thing about this is you can get a variety of different looks and photographic and photorealistic ways. So there's a few other little features here that we can have a little look at to be able to craft our light. So let's say for instance that we want to make a rim light and let's make it a bit bigger, so two by two. Now we like the way that our light is working. We like these reflections that we're getting and the specular highlights that this octagonal softbox is giving us. But the problem is we don't want to see it. You know, this is where CG lights really sort of have an advantage over real world lights is that in the real world, if you put this huge great rim light behind a robot, it would be impossible to keep the light without seeing the light. And so we can start to control this light even further by coming over to the render man tab and there's a couple of little options here that we can start to play with and so the first one here is down here we've got camera visibility so if you press on the cog and you go to set or create we can now turn it off so now what we've got is it's still in our scene it's still emitting our diffuse and specular light it's just that it's not visible to the camera and so this is really handy where you want to sort of put lights that are in your shot or in your scene but you don't really want to see them and it, you know it can work in the other way where you do want to see the lights if you're making something where you've got practical lights and you actually want to see the light this is where this camera visibility can really come in useful the other thing that i want to show you and if i just i'm going to swap out this hdri to i'm going to go back to this diffuse one here so by default, when I got this map, it comes in in this already warm color. And I don't necessarily want that. I actually want to take the color away and I want to be able to control it with the color temperature. So coming back over to the Render Man tab, we can actually knock the color out of this map by coming over to here where it says Map Saturation. 
and we can do set or create and we can take the saturation of this map out so now we've still retained the texture it's just that we don't want the color and then coming back to the base properties we can then turn on color temperature and so we can go to something like 3500 or we can go to 4500 whoops and then we can go to 4500 so what we've done is we've removed the saturation of the light whilst we've retained the texture and the detail of the cloth in front of our bulb but we're now controlling the color of our light with this color temperature and if i don't want to use the color temperature i can turn that off and then i can start to use the color parameters themselves so if i want to go more kind of motion graphics or kind of you know it looks quite mangary i can then start to place in a red light or i can make it render man blue or pink or yeah you get the picture and so just to summarize the rec light is easy to control but very powerful and very realistic when using a texture to drive the light color and quantity to really dial in and get those hyper realistic reflections and quality to your renders <laughs>